Hello and welcome. You're watching Coronavirus Facts versus Myths. I'm Kargi Rawat. Let's get to the data first. In India, reported 31,443 new cases in 24 hours, the lowest in 118 days. But a big jump in the death number. India reports 2,020 uh, deaths being reported in 24 hours. But this is after a backlog of over 1,400 cases was added from Madhya Pradesh. The country's active caseload is currently at 4,31,315, which is the lowest in 109 days. Well, now let's take a look at the COVID situation in the country. And the Prime Minister held a meeting today with Chief Ministers of the Northeast States over concerns about the cases rising there and the high positivity rate. In the South, Kerala is also continuing to uh, be a cause of concern with a high number of cases uh, being reported there every day. Uh, in fact, yesterday they reported over 7,000 cases. But before that, cases have been over 10,000 every day. Now, as many as 37 districts from the Northeast were reporting a positivity rates of over over 10 percent. Let's just take a look at what the Prime Minister said following that meeting where he said you have to keep a close eye on the variants. साथियों हमें कोरोना वायरस के हर वेरिएंट पर भी नजर रखनी होगी क्योंकि ये बिल्कुल बहुरूपिया है बार बार अपने रंग रूप बदल देता है और उसके कारण हमारे लिए भी चुनौतियां खड़ी करता है और इसलिए हमें हर वेरिएंट पर बहुत बारीकी से नजर रखनी पड़ेगी कि हिल स्टेशन में मार्केट्स में बिना वास्क पहने बिना प्रोटोकॉल का अमल किए बिना भारी भीड़ का उमड़ना मैं समझता हूं एक चिंता का विषय है ठीक नहीं है कई बार हम ये तर्क सुनते हैं और कुछ लोग तो बड़ा सीना तान करके बोलते हैं अरे भाई तीसरी लहर आने से पहले हम एंजॉय करना चाहते हैं ये बात लोगों को समझाना जरूरी है कि तीसरी लहर अपने आप नहीं आएगी कभी कभी लोग सवाल पूछते हैं तीसरी लहर के क्या तैयारी की है तीसरी लहर के लिए आप क्या करेंगे आज सवाल ये होना चाहिए हमारे मन में कि तीसरी लहर को आने से कैसे रोकना है हमारे प्रोटोकॉल को चुस्ती से कैसे अमल करना है all right, well, to talk more about the situation in the Northeast and in Kerala, we're joined by Dr. Navanil Barua, Director of Neurosurgery, Gohati Neurological Research Center, and Dr. Sulfi Nuhu, State President-Elect, IMA Kerala. Thank you both for joining us. And uh, Dr. Barua, first to you, uh, the situation in the Northeast, what explains these rising numbers? There are also concerns that a lot of the testing that is being done there is the rapid antigen test, which we know is not as, uh, you know, as specific or as uh, good as the RT-PCR test and it has a lot of false uh, positive uh, negatives as well. Uh, I, I can uh, analyze the, rep uh, the results in two ways. One is the reporting in Northeast is pretty high because of the education level and if you take into the effect of uh, education by the missionaries and everything, the reporting uh, would be higher than the rest of the country. Maybe that is one reason why this is uh, actually high. And secondly, uh, it is uh, an organically high. It is actually high. All may also may be pos uh, possible because the vaccination and uh, the lack of total lockdown. If you if you have noticed that because of the economic reasons in Assam at least they have not done complete 100% lockdown, and in the uh, other states as well. So these are the two reasons I feel that uh, vaccination. Of course, uh, if you take into account uh, northeast minus Assam, it is better probably driven by Tripura figures, but in Assam, it's much, much less than the national average. Uh, uh, in fact, the second dose is uh, less than 6%, whereas the national average is about 8%. So I think uh, combined these uh, factors, that's why we are having a persistent, and uh, it is high because the population of Northeast is not very high compared to the, national, uh, the rest of the country. So right. the and what about awareness you... about COVID? You know, how good is it in, in you know, in, in remote areas? And uh, and if also if we talk about healthcare services that are available to people. The healthcare services in Northeast are pretty bad because if you take into the national average of doctors, uh, it is 17,000, uh, one doctor per 17,000 is the national average. But in Northeast, it goes up as high as uh, maybe 23,000. 
so the facilities except for assam is not very good and also in assam it is mostly guwahati and dibrugarh centric uh, not in everywhere and in the other hill, hill states uh, the facilities are pretty bad now let me talk about specifically about one state which is mizoram where the education level the literacy level is very very high and people are known for its discipline and that is a state which is showing a very high incidence considering the population if you uh, take the number of cases uh, per million it is very high why i have spoken to their authorities and they feel although the mizos do not come out on the streets but they keep on socializing they keep on going to each other's house that the government so, has not been able to explain that it is not just going out on the street you should not interact with one another i think that awareness is much less in northeast uh, where people are very social and they like to visit each other and i think that is one factor which is driving this persistent second wave merging into third wave in uh, northeast merging into the third wave uh, dr sulfi if you could tell us about kerala you know because in, about kerala we've all praised the kerala model however uh, in the last couple of weeks the numbers have re remained consistently high even though numbers are coming down in other parts of the country yeah actually the the test positive rate is uh, more or less uh, remaining around uh, 10 at the moment and uh, uh, the cases uh, the the the, the i think uh, uh the rate is little um, you know plateauing and uh, it is not coming down and uh, as who said you know it's, it must come uh, below 5 but it's not coming yet. there are several reasons pointed out for, pointed out for this uh, the first of uh, first of all you know the, the population density of kerala is a big issue uh, and also the mobility of the people uh, people working uh, you know um, uh, working in um, uh, in kerala it's it's much more they travel uh, from one one place to another uh, very frequently and that is another reason pointed out and uh, um, also um, there are other reasons there are it's a, the, the most important reason is that the, since the people of kerala uh, they have you know they have obeyed the instructions to wear masks and keep social distancing they obeyed and now uh, definitely it's a positive thing now, even though it is affecting us now uh, you know that there are a lot of susceptible uh, susceptible population is still out there and uh, they are getting infected it seems uh, but at the moment uh, the hospitals are not full that's a very positive thing at uh, some you know maybe two three weeks back uh, most of the hospitals were almost full and uh, kerala went into a lockdown and now the hospitals are not full and we can still accommodate people that is the situation here and we are doing our level best to um, uh, you know uh, to come to bring the rate down red red still doesn't explain why it's so high in kerala considering you know so many steps have been taken and you know you've had health ministers who who've been uh, very leading from the front what is the vaccination uh, numbers like if you could take us through that yeah yes exactly see the vaccination rate is also around uh, it, it's good comparing to many other states but it's not if you uh, take the individual issue of kerala it is not at all good you know say i i have uh, uh, two uh, first point is uh, a big number the huge number of susceptible population is there and we need to vaccinate them at the earliest and actually on the ground there is a vaccine shortage at the moment and i think we have to correct that and we have to get maximum vaccination we have since there are two reasons you know if you compare it with uttar pradesh and uh, many other um, uh, many other states it's the vaccination rate is high but if you compare the uh, the uh, the amount of the the, the quantity of the uh on uh susceptible pox population in which uh, unvaccinated susceptible population the first right. thing second is second is also the the very high population density and the mobility of the, um, the mobility of the people in kerala we need we need the vaccination uh, speed to be augmented very fast very briskly that is the only uh, possible measure in which we can control this uh, this thing uh, very fast All right. Well, hopefully measures will be taken, and in the northeast as well. We do know a team from the center had gone to the northeast to help uh, with the COVID situation. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Barua and Dr. Nuhu, for joining us on the program. Now, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration has warned that the Johnson and Johnson's coronavirus vaccine can lead to an increased risk of a very rare neurological condition known as the Guillain-Barr syndrome. This is another setback for the vaccine that has largely been sidelined in the United States. Although regulators have found that the chances of developing the condition are very low, they appear to be three to five times higher among recipients of the Johnson and Johnson vaccine than among the general population in the U.S. According Uh, to uh, people uh, who, who were involved and familiar with the decision the warning was attached to fact sheets about the vaccine for providers and for patients 
And let's focus now on the situation in Southeast Asia that is suffering a dramatic rises in deaths and cases while vaccination shortfalls and highly contagious uh, variants are derailing containment efforts. Indonesia is recording about 30,000 new cases every day at the moment and hospitals there have been seeing an oxygen shortage while high numbers have been reported from Malaysia and Thailand. Well, to talk more about this, uh, we're now joined by Poonam Khetrapal, WHO Regional Director of Southeast Asia. Thank you so much uh, for joining us uh, the Delta variant uh, that's what's being seen as leading to the spike in cases in Asia where the vaccine rates uh, still remain very low Indonesia currently experiencing a massive crisis the situation continues to be concerning globally no country is out of the woods yet all variants of concern especially Delta are more transmissible allowed to spread the variants will lead to more cases, more hospitalization, increased pressure on health systems and healthcare worker, and increased risk of deaths. And that's what we saw recently across the world, including in countries of WHO Southeast Asia region. As the Delta variant continues to evolve and mutate, countries must constantly evaluate their situation right up to the subnational level and accordingly adjust their response. While efforts to further strengthen, test, trace and isolate must continue, societal interventions such as physical distancing, hand hygiene and proper use of masks must be stringently implemented. Areas reporting more transmissible variants may need these measures for longer durations. We have seen that when implemented well, public health and social measures work even against the variants. Hence, all possible efforts must be made to scale up and rigorously implement these measures. Dr. Khetrapal, so what steps are being taken to uh, increase access to vaccines? Uh, which are the countries that are of most concern? Equitable access to safe and effective vaccines is critical to ending the COVID-19 pandemic. Countries need to vaccinate at least 10% of their populations by September and 30% by the end of the year. While some countries have achieved a high level of vaccination coverage, others don't have enough to even vaccinate the health workers or other vulnerable sections, including the elderly, who have not even got their first dose. The supply is unable to meet the demand for vaccines, leading to an inadequate availability of vaccines, especially in the low middle income and low-income countries and this inequitable availability of vaccines is causing a two-track pandemic. WHO is actively engaged with both public and private institutions working to increase the production and supply of vaccines so it can be made available in an equitable and affordable manner to all. WHO has also urged countries which have extra doses to donate them so that most vulnerable populations in other nations can at least get the first dose. Right, and finally, Dr. Khetrapal, are there reports of any fresh variants emerging or is it the Delta variant that remains the big worry and the focus right now? So far, WHO has listed four variants of concern, Alpha, Beta, Gamma and Delta. All variants of concern are more transmissible. Among them, Delta is the most transmissible one. Now we have Delta with an additional spike mutation, which is being referred to by some as Delta Plus. WHO is tracking it as we are doing for other variants of concern with additional mutation. All variants of concern, including Delta, pose a higher public health risk. Hence, we need to do all we can 
to stop the viral spread, we must not give COVID-19 an opportunity to further mutate, spread and kill. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Poonam Khetrapal, for joining us uh, on the program. Well, with that, time for us to uh, slip into a short break. On the other side, we'll bring you some frequently asked questions about vaccines. And Dr. Sulfi Anu, who joins us to answer those questions. Now for our campaign, Vaccinate India, in partnership with Google, where we bring you questions that you frequently ask about vaccines and COVID, questions that you often Google. And to answer those questions, we have with us Dr. Sulfi Anuhu, State President-elect, IMA Kerala. Thank you so much for joining us. And now that, you know, we have uh, different vaccines and soon we'll have the Moderna vaccine, something that people are looking up a lot is how do MRR, mRNA vaccines work? So, uh, see, the, the, the typical examples of uh, mRNA vaccines are the Pfizer vaccine, the Moderna vaccine. You know, uh, the virus, uh, you know, it, 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 look, it looks like a ball and it, we, you have spikes uh, over the surface of this virus. What mRNA virus, uh, you know, it, it, when, it, when it is injected, uh, it reaches the spike protein and triggers an immune response, which acts exactly, exactly similar to a natural infection. So antibodies are uh, produced and the immune response is triggered and it gives an immunity against the, uh, the vaccination process. Uh, um, so far, you know, the many, many, many studies have been conducted all over the world regarding uh, the safety profile, uh, the, the efficacy of these vaccines, and they found that uh, they are giving excellent results at the moment. And how do they compare to the vaccines we currently have? Yeah, comparing, see, we have many vaccines being used in many parts of many parts of the country, many many parts of the world. Uh, all but see that the World Health Organization has categorically said that anything above fifty percentage of efficacy is is excellent. And now we have vaccines which gives protection up to ninety percent. So, uh, so, so you know, compare, you know, there are um, uh, there are small differences between the efficacy and uh, other things if, if you compare different vaccines. But almost all are uh, doing, uh, you know, giving excellent results at the moment. All right. So people shouldn't, uh, you know, wait for uh, the Moderna vaccine to come in and just take the vaccine that's available to them? Exactly. See, uh, see, anything above fifty percent is good. So we have vaccines with protection, of, protect, which gives protection up to seventy to ninety percent. See, it is definitely this is the only proven methodology by which we can um, uh, prevent deaths, uh, admission in ICUs, uh, usage of oxygen can be prevented. So it's an excellent uh, methodology, and this is the only proven methodology to prevent um, serious illness. Right, uh, Dr. News. Uh, the other question that people are looking up is about the antibodies and they often look up, does the presence of antibodies mean that the person is COVID immune? Yeah, see, we, we have, uh, see, uh, what happens is when you inject, when you, when you take a vaccine, uh, some antibodies are, uh, are uh, produced in our body. But only with measuring antibodies, we cannot predict that, we cannot say that this, this patient uh, is immune. There is another mechanism also along with that. This, this is, this is um, uh, modified by, this is acted by, this is controlled by uh, memory cells. W what this memory cell do, they do, what, what they do is, when, uh, when we find the virus inside our body, they, they trigger a response and uh, they, they produce um, um, the immunogenicity against this virus. So the, both these mechanisms act. So if, uh, just by the antibodies, not only by the antibodies, by this T cell, memory cells, T memory cells gives an excellent response. Uh, they trigger an immune response and that gives an excellent results as far as the uh, virus infection is concerned. Right, Dr. Nuhu, but what's started happening is a lot of people after, you know, either they've had the COVID infection or they've had the vaccine, they, they keep getting tested for antibodies. What would you say to them? Yeah, you see, there is actually there is no need to test the antibody. That is what I said. In, in some cases, you may be getting a high level of antibodies against the virus, but that is not the only mechanism by which the, uh, the vaccine acts. It, and that is what I said. You know, it triggers an immune response. It triggers an immune response when the virus enters into the body. Uh, so if you get a vaccine, uh, that memory cell, memory cell will save the memory. And if you get the infection, that will trigger an immune response and they will get, um, get the uh, defensive mechanism against the virus infection. Both of them work together and many of the uh, vaccines gives, uh, you know, the memory cell action is more than the antibody, antibody production uh, by the vaccination itself. All right, so you needn't go into, uh, you know, constantly exactly, testing your exactly. uh, antibody no level that, that, yeah. and getting worried about it. Thank you so much, Doctor, for joining us. 